The symbols of the elements of pair 3 of the periodic table are shown. You have sodium, group 1, all the way up to argon. Write the symbol for the element which forms a stable ion with a 2 plus charge. That's easy. That has to be magnesium. Is the least reactive in the period? That has to be argon. Is used in water treatment? Well, last time I checked, they used chlorine for that. Forms an oxide which is the main impurity in iron ore. Now, this might be a little confusing for some, but you gotta realize that iron ore is extracted from earth, right? Like the filled with dirt so sand <laughs> that's the main impurity so silicon not silicon dioxide we're referring to silicon dioxide but the answer is silicon okay it's an important component of fertilizer they'll generally refer to NPK nitrogen potassium phosphorus um, so the only one we have is potassium sorry phosphorus right is stored under oil because it's so reactive? The answer is so DM. Is used to contain or contain foods like make containers out of it? I would say tin, but tin isn't in the option, so aluminum is my next best bet. Uh, zinc ore is out of the syllabus, so we'll just skip it. Calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. Calcium hydroxide can be made by the reaction of calcium calcium with water. Write the chemical equation for this reaction. So calcium can readily, readily react with water to form calcium hydroxide. And hydrogen gas. And to balance it off, I think if I put a 2 over here, Mm, I think we're balanced. That's uh, uh, four hydrogen, two, four, two oxygen, two, one calcium. I think we're good. Name another substance that reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide. Um, has to have calcium in it. My guess, which is, I mean, calcium oxide can do it. So calcium oxide. I have to name it. So we won't write the formula down, right? Let's move on. When calcium hydroxide dissolves in water, it dissociates into ions and forms a weakly alkaline solution. So just the pH of the solution. So it's weak, so I go with nine. Uh, but the marking scheme will tell you the range, anything from seven to 12 works. So yeah, they're very generous this time around. Give the formula of the ions responsible for the making the solution alkaline. <laughs> yep. Name the gas lime water is used to test for as lime water is saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. Uh, not many people know this, but limestone is calcium carbonate. Uh, lime, I believe it's just calcium hydroxide. So and you know this is quick lime and calcium oxide is just lime so this is referred to as you know the whole lime thing uh, name the gas lime water is used to test for well they used to test carbon dioxide and let's move on suggest so what is meant by the term saturated solution um yeah so i think i would have not scored two marks over here if i was sitting for the test because i'm looking at the marking scheme and what they're saying is it is a solution that can can't actually dissolve any more solute not to be confused with saturated in terms of alkanes and alkenes and uh, the second mark is actually for 
um, at a given temperature. That's interesting because solutions can dissolve more if you heat them at a given temperature. Moving on. Describe how you would make a sample of lime water starting with sol solid calcium hydroxide. This doesn't seem to be too hard. Okay. Um, add excess amounts of into water. And the next thing you do is filter the excess, right? And you're done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Describe how you would test for the presence of calcium ions in lime water. How would you test for it? So my test is going to be add NaOH to it equals remember your identification of ions or salt analysis and what will happen observations will be a white precipitate is formed white precipitate is formed you can say PPT in the exam white precipitate formed now what's interesting is when you add sodium hydroxide these three ions will give you a precipitate. What's zinc? Well, it's zinc, aluminum, and calcium. Now, calcium is known to give you a precipitate. They'll all give you a white precipitate. But what's interesting about calcium is it'll give you a white precipitate and will stay a white precipitate in excess, whereas both of these dissolve in excess, right? And that's how you, so these, there are quite a few white precipitates. Uh, chlorine gives you white precipitate. But for sodium hydroxide, only these three will give you a white precipitate. So when you add sodium hydroxide, you know it's either one, two, or three. One of these three ions, right? And when you add an excess, you, and if it doesn't dissolve, you know for certain it is calcium. So what do we write over here? Which will be insoluble in excess and you will be without any doubt certain that it is calcium. Name the item of apparatus used to measure the volume of acid in this titration. Uh, it's a burette. Get your spelling right, people. I've noticed a lot of people have just stopped paying attention to spelling. Uh, there are a lot more spelling mistakes and people just simply don't know what a burette or a pipette is so good thing to revise and a small video revision of that should be more than enough you just need to know when to use what i think it's very simple i don't think anyone having issues well i guess just reach out because you shouldn't be having issues especially in grade you know if you're sitting for the exam in a month state the type of reaction which takes place while well, acid and base it is neutralization as well as lime water and dilute hydrochloric acid what else must be added to the conical flask well an indicator so you know when the reaction is complete, indicator or neutralization has taken place. That's a better way of raising it. Right? Okay, moving on. The equation is a reaction of calcium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid, 20 centimeter cube of 0 0.05 uh, mole per decimeter cube of HCl. Oh my god. So. I always keep saying this is such a huge statement always bothered me it would have been great if the examiner just summarized this for us what you should do is you know take this value right 
take this value and convert it into moles directly. So how many moles are there in 20 centimeter cube of 0 0.05 HCl? And this value comes out to be, oops, this value comes out to be 0 0.001 moles of again hydrochloric acid, right? So I think we've already answered part one. And why am I telling you to do it like this? The for titrations or for any long moles question, it's a I think like you've if you've known how I teach it, you've come to realize that it's kind of simple, it's not complicated, but the problem with it is that it can be very tedious or like all over the place, right? They'll ask you parts in different areas and that could lead to more confusion than them helping you. If they had just given you the question and asked you to do the final answer, you would have find, found it much easier, right? So solve as much as you can without, you know, just by reading the question and it's already done, right? Apply ratios and find out the missing one. So you're almost halfway done already. So while reading the question, you can solve it and just place in the values and get your marks. So let's move on. Again, we've done the first part and we'll put the value in there. It's going to be 0 0.001 moles. Determine the number of moles. Well, what's the ratio between um, calcium hydroxide to HCl to HCl? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if this is 0 0.001, this has to be, well, I forgot to highlight the ratios, but for every two, I need one. So this should be half of that, 0 0.00, 0 0.05 should do it. And those are the moles of calcium hydroxide used. Pretty small number. Let's move on. Calculate the concentration of CaOH in moles per decimeter cube. And so you have this in a 25 centimeter cube solution. So I won't put it in the formula. You guys can. Uh, I know this much is in 25 centimeter cube. I'll divide by 25. And I want to know how much is it in one decimeter cube. So that's one decimeter cube. And let's see what this comes out to be. Answer comes out to be a very tiny value again, 0 0.02 moles. Uh, okay. okay, now they want us to answer the same concentration in grams per decimeter cube. And people find this confusing for some reason. So what does this mean? 0 0.02, 0 0.00, 0 point, oh my God, 0 0.02 moles per decimeter cube. That means for every one decimeter cube, you have uh, 0 0.02 moles of calcium hydroxide present. How much in grams is 0 0.02? Well, I can figure that out if I knew the MR and just do that. So what's the MR? I believe calcium is 40, oxygen is 16, hydrogen is one, but the two of these, so multiply that by two. I think that's it. The answer comes out to, the answer comes out to be 1.48 grams per decimeter cube. Pretty easy. All right, what is meant by the term isotopes? They are atoms of the same element, atoms of the same element, with different number of neutrons. Or you could say, Same number of protons, atoms with similar, you know, same number of protons, different neutrons, different number of neutrons. Moving on. State the nuclear number of manganese. Let's check the periodic table. Now make sure you don't read something else under or over manganese. You know what the nuclear number is. It is 55. What is the nucleon number, by the way? Nucleon is just the term referred to um whatever's in the nucleus so what do you have in the nucleus you got protons and you got neutrons and those are technically nucleons if, um, if there ever was a confusing thing in chemistry this would really be it it's simple but like they're purposefully trying to mess with people aren't they 
Uh, protons and neutrons are referred to as nucleons because they are part of the nucleus. Uh, this number is essentially the mass number. Again, you don't have to say that, but yeah. We move on with our lives. All right, complete the table for protons, neutrons, for chromium. Chromium is going to be, chromium is going to be 24 protons. I say 24, I write 25, nice. Don't do that mistake, kids. 28 neutrons, and it has a charge of three plus, so that's three less, so 21 electrons, because it has a positive charge. Give the colors of the following hydrated salts. And this is something you have to memorize, but who doesn't know what copper sulfate looks like? Hydrated is gonna be blue, and uh, hydrated cobalt chloride, and you, if you're confused, the data sheet tells you the color of cobalt is going to be green. Let's move on with our lives. State two other chemical properties of transition elements. Um, they have variable oxidation number. Variable oxidation number. Variable. Fun fact, they are good catalysts because they have variable oxidation numbers. So they are good catalysts. I'm tired of our colors, let's get new colors. Can act as catalysts. Transition elements in group one elements are metals. Good to know, thanks for that informative uh, factoid, I guess. Explain why transition elements and group one elements conduct electricity. Uh, there are two reasons anything can conduct electricity, either because of free moving electrons or free moving ions. Over here in a solid, well, you won't have free moving ions. Free moving electrons is the reason. Free to move. Electrons be beautiful. State the property that describes a material which can be hammered into shape. What is this property? Malleability. Malleability. How do I spell it? Malleability. Describe two other ways in which the physical properties of transition elements differ from group one elements. Um, they are much harder, uh, they have higher densities, higher densities, and uh, what other? Um, just harder. Harder, yeah, like you can't say hard, I'm a little confused, I don't want to say hard because uh, they're stronger. I'll go with high melting point. What is your best bet what fluorine looks like? It's going to be a yellow green gas. Because we don't know what fluorine looks like, but it's right next to chlorine and that's our Best bet, yellow green gas. Because you haven't noticed, if you haven't, group 17 follows a trend and gets darker and darker as you go down. Because chlorine itself is yellow green, in fact, bromine is orange, iodine is black, and astatine they ask you to predict, which is going to be black as well, because iodine is black and astatine is below iodine. Fluorine reacts with sulfur to form a compound that has 25.2 percent sulfur by mass and relative molecular formula 25 okay determine the molecular formula of this compound all right and the way i like to do this question is there are more ratios than anything else so you have sulfur and fluorine uh, the idea is uh, sulfur has by mass 
is 25.2 and this would be 25.27 what is it 74.8 right and uh, so these are the masses how do i know it's 74.8 well if sulfur is 25.2 uh, the rest of the 100 percent should be 74.8 which is belongs to fluorine now i know their masses how do i know their count count would help me figure out their ratios so uh, divide by their MR, this is 32, and this is fluorine is not, it's not 19. Is fluorine 19, what's fluorine? Oh, it is 19. Yeah, I think I was confusing fluorine with chlorine's proton number. Fluorine is 19 by mass. Its mass is 19, I should say. And chlorine, of course, is 35.5. This is going to be 0 0.78752. Three point nine three three point nine three six or seven. Let's go with seven. All right, dividing this by the smallest value, I get one to five. That's the ratio. That's interesting. So the empirical formula for this is SF five, right? Now, what's the MR for SF five? Let's figure that out. It's thirty two plus 5 times 19 was it this comes out to be 127 now 127 is exactly half of uh, 254 right isn't it ain't it uh, so without any further calculation i can confidently say this is s2 f10 why because if sf this is the ratio this is the minimal ratio and uh, so the next thing i could have is S to F10, and that'll have a molecular four. mass of 254. Double that of this. Moving on with our lives. Oh, okay. So people might see this and find this a little, little confusing. A little confusing. Um, normally, what they do is make it very easy for you, even though they try to trick you by, you know, showing chlorine and. A lot of people looking at this might go like, oh, I've never seen this thing before in my life. How could they? Uh, the easy part is it resembles something very similar. Um, like what does, how does nitrogen bond with chlorine? Nitrogen can form only one bond. Oh, th sorry, three bonds. And chlorine can form only one bond. So here you see it. Uh, and two electrons are kind of, you know, left behind. I know this. And I'm doing it, copying it without even figuring out the dot and cross first, is because this is reminiscent of another molecule that I know of really well. Ammonia, right? Who hasn't drawn the dot and cross of ammonia? What's the point over here? Why am I talking like this? So, for example, if you know the formula for CH4, or the dot and cross for CH4, and who doesn't, you can figure out CCl4, let's say. Because chlorine will behave very similar to hydrogen, right? If you know the uh, dot and cross for H2O, well, you know the dot and cross for H2S, let's say. And that looks very weird until you realize sulfur is right below oxygen, so it's in the same group. Both have six outer electrons, so they'll behave exactly the same. Uh, so let's figure it out. So chlorine can be X because I have to draw a lot of X. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 6. Right, whatever electron you have to draw a lot of, just make the max because it's faster to do. Ain't it? I forgot to draw one, I guess. And we're done. Complete the dot and cross. A lot of people get dot and crosses wrong. So uh, over here, um, lithium's lost its electron. So people just leave this. Uh, what you should realize is they want you to show the inner electron, right? So we'll draw that. And um, the dots are already taken by chlorine. So we'll give it the next best thing. Sure, crosses. It has two electrons in its inner shell. And for someone tell me why this happens a lot the charge on lithium 
is positive it's not plus one or it's not one plus you don't write one plus right if you do that either or is wrong and if it's let's say two if it was like something like calcium if you write plus two that's wrong what you should write is two plus that's how you uh, refer to the charge right so it's plus and over here it's just chlorine so just chlorine has a just negative charge again not one minus and the outer electron over here is not drawn so let's do that okay shouldn't have put crosses mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes people just make like a very tiny dot and just make it a slightly bigger you know you don't have to try it too hard uh, not as huge as I'm making but something that's easily visible because sometimes people will draw a very dark line and this is the dot on it like can't see that so yep yep moving on okay moving on explain in terms of attractive forces between particles why LiCl is solid at room temperature but NCl3 is liquid with relative low boiling point this is an excellent question because at least it showed two dot and cross diagrams for us and we kind of compared them and uh, yeah okay now why is it different is because first you have to highlight why well they're different structures one is ionic the other one is not ionic i think the question tells you if it's ionic even though it you know on the off chance it doesn't tell us or didn't tell us you know this is ionic because it is a metal bonded to a non-metal so LiCl is an ionic structure and is held together by strong ionic bonds which require a lot of energy to overcome. I'm gonna extend the limit because I'm writing by default, it is my nature, I guess, as a teacher to write a more complete answer but I think you can just be a little shy and uh, give some less details and those are already two marks so now you have to compare it with um, NCL3 and we can just do that very easily uh, whereas NCL3 is what kind of structure people get this wrong I think this is the hardest to understand for people because this particular thing has technically two different kinds of forces or bonds right uh, it has covalent bonds but the res one responsible for its melting or boiling is the forces of attraction between molecules not within the molecule itself which are covalent bonds and NaCl is a weak is a simple molecular structure simple molecule let's go with that and is held together by weak by weak weak van der Waals. I think the V is capital van der Waals this forces and hence little energy is required to overcome it little energy required to overcome
and this particular paper i feel people either got it really well or just got correct because such a long question on dot and cross and then all of kind of organic kind of shows up uh, so i find it easy and fun not because i'm a teacher but i think these are things by default i focus on a lot bonding and organic um, once you understand these things i think the paper becomes very trivial okay name reaction one it is sugar turning into eth and all um, sugar turning into ethanol is we're trying to make alcohol fermentation from well sugar name reaction two i need this uh, well ethanol is turning into carbon dioxide and what um and write down the equation for it uh so Amateurs might find it a little confusing, but it's just combustion. Combustion. Okay. And the formula is C2H5. And this is the probably the difficult part because the oxygen is one oxygen over here with ethanol. And that makes it kind of tricky to balance. So you gotta practice these balancing while you you know revise for organic so what do we need uh there's only one so let's put a two over here i think it's going to be a big number i need a four over here because i'll balance the carbons out uh now there are 12 hydrogens on the left side so i'll put a six over here and that's six total over here and four times two is eight eight plus six is 14 14 from 14 i already have uh two over here so 12 so that isn't too bad but they're all multiples of two so i can simplify it actually and make it smaller and this is just going to be one i think i forgot what this was so i'll do it again uh, this is Two, and this is three so three four five six seven and I already have one over here so that's a three over here I think we're balanced six over here seven oxygens I think we're good right and this is a little confusing so let's remove this and move on reaction three is Ethanol from an alkene. Identify alkene 1. I don't even have to look at it. If uh, uh, ethanol is formed, it has to be from ethene. So I think I can just say ethene, which is C2H4, right? Uh, state the type of reaction occurs in during reaction 3. A lot of people might get confused and call it hydrogen, but the type of reaction, not the name of the reaction, the type is... is confusing I, I get it but it is addition it's an addition reaction and that's what they want you to say now over here you'll understand they want you to they're asking for this word addition rather than hydration because they're saying what type of reaction is it um all ethene reactions are addition reactions because and what's an addition reaction well no matter what your ingredients are for example and it doesn't necessarily have to be an organic reaction could be any reaction as long as anything multiple reactants form into one product that's an addition reaction they're adding on to it right so yeah state the reagents and conditions needed for reaction three this is probably the hardest thing not hard but like you have to remember it uh, reagents for reaction three is water and uh, the catalyst used over here is phosphoric acid and you keep it at 300 degrees celsius and this is in the marking scheme right oh sorry the syllabus the syllabus highlights all conditions and so thank god so i do have a cheat sheet where i've highlighted all of this so you can grab that or just look at the syllabus highlight all the conditions given to you so for organic especially do that uh, and the temperature is, oh sorry, the pressure is 60 atmosphere. 
a lot of people will say 60 kPa or 60 kPa is actually fine. No, kPa isn't fine. Uh, 60 pa or 60 kPa, that is wrong atmospheres, right? Just keep it simple. Ethanol is oxidized in reaction 5 by heating it with dilute sulfuric acid and one other agent. So if you've ever noticed, uh, when you oxidize something, you always use, you know, like you use something like KMnO4. But what is interesting is it's acidified. So you'll say acidified KMnO4 or sometimes to refer to acidified, you'll write H plus, H plus, you know, implying that an acid is also mixed to it. So I think that just improves the rate of reaction or just makes it a little more apparent. Uh, but they're referring to the acid, what else should be added? Well, the actual oxidizing agent, right? So that's what they're looking for, it's potassium. Potassium. Magnate. All right, in the homologous series, compound C belongs to. C is a carboxylic zilic acid. All right, draw the structure of compound C. Show all the atoms and all the bonds. That is ethanoic acid with two carbons. One carbon has a oxygen with a double bond, of course, ethanoic acid, and one, and a two, and a three. Perfect. Let's move on. Polymer X is a condensation polymer. Part of the structure is shown. How many molecules of water are produced when this part of the molecule X is formed from its monomers? So water will be formed as a result of this, this ester link and this ester link. This is known as an ester link. Why is it called an ester link? Is because the acid function group can react with the alcohol function group. And the OH from the, this is very important to know, the OH from the acid, the hydrogen alone from the alcohol combine together to form a two, H2O. And the rest of the molecule, this part, and from this part, join together. And this is what it looks like. Let me draw it on the side. Like that, and that. Uh, oxygen. C, right? So this is the new bond formed, and this is known as the ester link. This is an important thing to know. They'll ask you this. But identifying this can help you name esters. It can help you with this question because we are looking at these bonds one more time because this is where the water is formed. This is a very important thing to know. It's not hard. It's just very important, right? So three H2O molecules will be formed because, well, we can only see three bonds in this part of the monomer. Let us move on. Complete the structures. Complete the structures. I want to keep the top part in here so I can take a look. So this part of the molecule, this is the you know empty square. See the empty square over here? Actually, it's a little more clear here. So let me just erase this bit. Now, you should realize, and this is again where the ester link idea comes in, the bond was formed here and here, right? So this part of the molecule is already here. So let's draw it out. Now, the rest isn't here, but you, I just explained to you that this is how it's formed, right? So what did the acid lose, the OH? Well, this is a half the acid part. What did it end up losing? Well, the OH, so that has to be the monomer. So this is a good question why two things I really emphasize when it comes to esters and polymers, condensation polymers is, or like essentially two things is what your entire understanding is based on. One thing is the OH is from the acid to make an ester or a condensation polymer. And the hydrogen comes from, well, this is part, you know, the hydrogen, like it's the same point, even though I've written the two. 
age is from the alcohol or it could be the amine from alcohol or amine slash amine I'm just going to write am what is an amine function group it is nitrogen with two hydrogens like that the other part is one to two a carbon you might have seen this scary looking thing but it essentially acts like an alcohol with that said and done okay what's the second rule i was talking about again count this as one rule i shouldn't have written two down anyway the third thing is you should or second thing i'll i'll be adamant the second thing actually is there we go the second thing that's important is how what the ester link is the ester link is for the amine link for that group this is the ester link it is between the carbon with the double bonded o and the oxygen so in a molecule it might look confusing but this is what an ester link is anyway now let's bring our attention back to part two of this question this is what the al alcohol part looks like let's cut it on this side as well and this is the entire part so let's complete it first oh oh and what did it lose well an alcohol loses hydrogen so hydrogen hydrogen and voila as always we move on to the next part of the question what type of condensation polymer is it well it is many esters so it has to be a polyester All right, part of the polymer Y is shown. State the number of different types of monomers needed to make polymer. Again, you'll identify your ester link. Ester link, ester link. Now, the O is not here, but you're pretty sure the O is here, right? Um, ester link, so on and so forth. Okay, now over here, it's something interesting. It is the same thing over and over again. So what's happening is this part of the molecule is an acid and this part is an alcohol. And this part of the acid, oh sorry, the alcohol is bonding to the other molecules, this part. And you can see that happening. This part, the alcohol is bonding to the other side of the same molecule, that is an acid, and it can keep on going. So it's interesting how even one monomer can give you a polyester sort of molecule. And again, the answer for this question is one type of monomer is present here. Over here, the monomer should look something like this this is the repeating unit right so what is that uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and it is one carbon i'm just drawing the middle middle two carbons this has a ch3 over here so what i'll actually do is i'll draw it on the left hand side actually let's just keep it here it's okay and I'll draw the other one here and CH3 here and H here. What is this molecule? It has one, two, three, four carbons. Uh, didn't I forget something? I forgot the double bond in the middle. So it has four carbons, so it's butte. And the double bond is on the second carbon. Why not on the third carbon? It says on the second and third carbon, and you'll always prefer the lower carbon when you're numbering it. So butte to in. Between numbers and text, there was there will always be a dash, a hyphen. So don't forget to add that. People will generally forget that. Don't do it. Let us move on. In the chemical process used to make the monomer that forms polymer Z. The monomer from the polymer, the, the monomer from the polymer. So how can you break a long chain of uh, a hydrocarbon into a smaller chain? Does that sound familiar? Well, they're referring to fracking. What fun. Plot twist, right? All right, I think we're done with organic. And we're also done with the paper itself. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this interesting. Uh, please follow my Discord channel where you can find me and some of my 
old students who have been following me for a while and there are will be more than welcome to answer any of your questions or i'll also be there if you have any questions or any other support so yeah the link will be below so yeah i'll see you guys on discord take care bye bye